In this video, we're going to do a Bible study about the children of the covenant. What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Life family, a place where we learn God's word that builds your faith strong. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris, and we're going to do a Bible study like we do. And like I said, the, the title for today's devotion is called Children of the Covenant, and we're going to discuss this and understand what it means. Our theme scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 3, and verse 25. I'll read on. It says, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. That's Acts, chapter 3, verse 25. Let me read the first paragraph, then we can discuss this. Pastor Chris says, They are Christians... They're Christians who say they have a covenant with God. They teach that since God made a covenant with Abraham, and we are Abraham's seed, we are therefore automatically in covenant with God. Um, sorry about that noise. But no, the Christian isn't in covenant with God. You need to know who the Christian is. He's one with Christ. He's an associate of the God kind. Abraham had a covenant with God, but we are not in that covenant. Who are we? We are children of the covenant. Oh man. So that's why we were talking about covenant. I mean that, that kind of sounds so biblical. It just means an agreement. It means um let's find out what it means. <laughs> I have um let me look at dictionary for this. So I'm looking at my dictionary right now. Covenant it says an agreement, usually formal between two or more persons to do or not to do something specified. Uh-huh. So it's an agreement. That's what a covenant means. And he actually refers to the Bible. The conditional promises made to humanity by God as revealed in the scripture. The agreement between God and the ancient Israel in which God promised to protect him if they kept his law. So things like that. It's an agreement. It's like a covenant. It's like a treaty. Not even a treaty. It's like, um, yeah, it's an agreement. Something that bounds you together, you know what I mean? And, and you come into agreement, you come into uh, a contract. Oh, that's the best word to say, contract. It's like signing a contract that says, these are my rights, this is what you're going to do, this is what my, you expect of me. So it's a contract. God had a contract with, uh, with Abraham, and he said, saying unto Abraham, in thy seed shall all the kingdoms of the earth be blessed. He said, I will bless you and make, uh, make thy name great. You know what I mean? That was the, the contract. That was the, the agreement that God had with Abraham. He would say he would make his name great. His, his seed will be great. And he said that actually that um, those blessings were, were to Abraham and his seed. And his seed was Christ. Um, so, yeah. So, we are, we are children of that covenant. Because we are, he says, if ye, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham. Actually, I'm going ahead of myself. The next paragraph actually explains it. Uh, Pascal says, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 to 29 says, for ye are the children of God by faith um, in Christ Jesus. For as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For we are one in Christ. And if ye be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seeds and seed and heirs according to that promise according to that contract we are heirs of the covenant that god had with abraham because we are abraham's seed and those promises were made to abraham and his seed and we are his seed so in essence we god did not make that contract with us he made it with abraham and then we came as a result of their contract because he said through you the nations of the world will be blessed and this is how we became blessed by god having that covenant with i mean with with abraham and so we came as a result of that so we're not in a um a contract with god or a covenant with god how can you be a contract with your i mean people can be in a contract with their dads whatever but that's just weird it says if any man be in christ is a new creation all things are passed away so we are born anew we don't have we are born of God. So how will God have a contract with us? And why would he have a contract? Who has a contract with their kids? You know? Um 
I'm actually getting ahead of myself. In the next paragraph, he explains it. He said, in a marriage relationship, for example, the couple signs a nuptial agreement and come into a covenant. The covenant, however, does not... So that covenant, like I was saying, that covenant is like an agreement. It's a certificate. It's a contract. Like a marriage contract, a marriage certificate. That covenant, however, does not involve their children. The children from that marriage will be products or fruits of, of that agreement. And it makes sense because the marriage brought the man and the woman together and then kids were born out of this contract. That makes perfect sense. The kids were not involved in the signing of the agreement. So you can't say, oh, oh for example, if, 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 I mean, if the mom, if the, if the woman and the husband decide to divorce, of course, it's gonna be there's gonna be an effect on the kids. Maybe they're like, "Oh, who's gonna have the kids? Who's who's gonna have it?" But the effect will come on the kids, not directly to the kids. So, like for example, if a woman divorces, uh, um, depending on different laws, or a man divorces a woman, whatever they might say, you know, you need to give her this amount of money, blah blah blah, or half of your property or stuff like that. That has no effect on on um. The, the husband does not give the the um the properties or whatever the properties to the to their kids directly no it's based on that contract or their marriage they had it goes to the his former wife so the kids are just by products of that agreement and it affects them either positively or negatively because when people you know you, you understand when people divorce and then the kids have to be split so they are just a result of that covenant I says the children and let me keep on reading. The children from the marriage will be products or fruits of the covenant. Read our opening verse again. It's clear. We are children of the covenant that God made with Abraham and the patriarchs. He says, many have written books on our covenant with God. But the danger of this misleading belief is that it places the Christian in a position below his calling and his birthright. Our relationship with God, and that's the key word, relationship with God is one of father and his and his children. Blessed thought. How wonderful to know we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are children of the covenant. We own the world and we walk in divine excellence. Hallelujah. God is our father. We have no contracts with God. We have we have in, we're in a relationship with God based on birthright. We were born of him. We are tied to him. He's our, our father. So it's not, we don't have any terms like he had with the children of Israel. If you do this, I'll bless you. If you don't do this, I'll happen to you. No, we are kids. And we automatically have to walk in that blessing. Because as a kid, as, as a kid in the house, wherever you um, belongs, wherever you own, your kids own it. Actually, let me tell this story. This is a beautiful story. Um, let's read about that story in the Bible. I think it's a beautiful story that kind of... Uh, let me read this beautiful story that kind of illustrate this. You had, you, you probably have heard of it. Um, Jesus tells this parable from Luke chapter fifteen and verse eleven. I'll read on. It's gonna be like a little, a little bit of a long read. I'll read it fast. He's and he said, there was a certain man who had two sons, and the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the part of the property that falls to me. And he divided the estate between them. And now many days after that, the younger son gathered all that he had and journeyed into a distant country. There he wasted his fortune in reckless and loose from restraint living. And when he had spent all he had, a mighty famine came upon that country. And he began to fall behind and be in want. So he went and first glued himself upon one of the citizens of that country who, who sent him into his fields to feed the hogs. And when and he would gladly have fed on and filled his belly with the cob pods the hogs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger. Nobody gave him anything. Then when he came to himself, oh man, he said, how many hired servants of my father have enough food, even, even food to spare, but I'm perishing, dying here of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me like one of your hired servants. 
Look at this. So he basically got his inheritance and he wasted it, wasted his dad's property, wasted all his dad worked for. And he's thinking to himself, you know what? I'm st and then he, obviously he's starving and, he, and he's in want. And he says, I'm going to go back home. He says, even one of my dad's servants, they live well. I'm just going to repent and, and I just going to, I know my dad is going to disown me. and just going to make me one of his servants. That's fine. He says, and I'm going to tell him it's no longer worthy to be called your son. So he got up and came to his own father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him. He ran and embraced him and kissed him fervently. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I no longer deserve to be recognized as your son of yours. <laughs> Did you see that? He said, I don't need, I don't deserve to be recognized as your son. This is an interesting relationship. And then, but the father said to his, to, to his born servants, bring quickly the best robe, the festive robe of honor, put it on him. Give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet and bring out the well-fattened calf and kill it and let us revel and feast and be happy and make merry because my, this, my son, oops, what happened there, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to revel and feast and make merry. But his older son was in the field, and as he returned and he came near the house, he had music and dancing. Having, having called one of the servants to him, he began to ask what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed a well fattened calf, because he received him back safe and well. But his elder brother was angry. With deep-seated wrath, he resolved not to go in. Then his father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Look, this many years have I served you. I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me so much as a little kid that I might revel and feast and be happy and make merry with my friends. Well, but when this son of yours arrived, who has devoured your estate with immoral women, you have killed for him the fattened calf, the wheat fattened calf. And the father said to him, Son, you always with me. And all that is mine is yours. But it was fitting to be merry and rebel and feast and rejoice. For this, your, this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is amazing. There is no contract. So think about when the point I'm trying to say, people that say we're in a contract with God. There is no contract with God. We're in a relationship with a father-son, father-children relationship. God loves us so much. This we, we don't have to do stuff to please him because... Based on our rights of being sons and daughters of his, we own everything that belongs to him. Based on our right. We all insist on our rights. Going to say, oh Lord, remember your covenant that you had with Abraham. Bless us because of that. No, we are sons of God. We are blessed by the fact because we are born of God. That is, that's what qualifies us for the blessing. It says, Lord, I'm your son. Because I'm your son. Oh man. The blessing. I walk in the prosperity. Because I'm your son. I have to walk in divine health. Not because of the contract Abraham had with God. That's good. But we are sons. And I think. And have you noticed the, the elder son. Was trying to bring legal. Uh, so the, this is a perfect analogy actually. It reminds us of people that, that think they're in a contract with God. And someone that just. And then God switching it around because the son was like, oh, yeah, I've done all these things. I've been nice. I've been the best kid. I've not spent all your money. So based on my works, I need to be blessed. But he's, the daddy said, no, it has nothing to do with what you do. You are my son anyway. All that I have is yours regardless. Because his son spent, the other son spent all his money. He didn't say now because he spent all this, you cannot be my son. No, he said, he's still my son. And in fact, can you imagine when he came back, he didn't even try to hear his apology, his repentance. While he was here talking and saying, oh yeah, I'm sorry I've done it. His dad is like, give him the best, the best robe. Put some jewelry in his hands. Put some rings. Give him the best shoes. Give him some Gucci shoes. Put some nice jacket on him. Give him some chains and some jewels. <laughs> Man, that's amazing. Because isn't it amazing? That shows us how God thinks. We're trying to qualify ourselves to him, but he's saying we are, we are born of him. 
and and let me show you this because some of them are thinking how do you mean you are god's sons all right let me show you this let us go to romans chapter 8 and verse 16. is it 8 chapter 8 verse 16 let's find it uh he says the spirit himself testifies together oh man i like that the spirit himself testifies together with our own spirit assuring us that we are children of god and if his children then we are his heirs also heirs of god fellow heirs with christ sharing oh this is i've never seen this translation this is amazing it says and if his children then we are his heirs also heirs of god fellow heirs with christ sharing his inheritance with him only we must share his suffering if we share his glory we share the inheritance with christ and now it's not 50 50 when you think about insurance oh yeah it's like oh yeah maybe 70 30 because christ is 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 you know that's god so we can't have the same amount so maybe 70 maybe god has 90 percent and then we'll, he'll give us 10 percent no we as kids, children of God, as Christ Jesus is, is a child, is a son of God. We were born of God. And not only that, there's no separation. When you say we're sharing his inheritance, because we are one with him. We were we were we, we are one with, with the Lord. So there's that inheritance belongs to us a hundred percent together. There's no 50, 50 or 60, 40. No, we share it a hundred percent together because we are one that is the key thing so let us take this confession with that mindset with that understanding all things are mine repeat repeat this after me all things are mine i have i have everything that i require for life and godliness because i'm an heir of god and a joint heir with christ i'm rich in all things because god has caused his grace to abound towards me to be super abundantly supplied, exceedingly fruitful, and productive in every good work. Hallelujah forevermore. Uh, you can read further studies in Romans chapter 8, verse 16 to 17. Um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Acts chapter 3, and verse 25. And you can follow a one year Bible plan or a two year plan. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. You know, it's bringing some more insight and light into God's word. And if you're watching for the first time, welcome to the to the, welcome to the family, the Shine Light family. So make sure you subscribe if you've not. We learn God's word here every single day and build our faith super strong. And I want to pray for you. Before that, though, I want if you're not born again, I want to pray for you first, though. That's the number one thing. If you're not born again. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is important. You can't be an heir of God unless you're born again. That's how you become born of God. So I'm going to lead you into this prayer. Say this after me. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you say that prayer, you're born again. You're a child of God. An heir of God. A joint heir with Christ. <laughs> so I want to pray for you that are watching. I pray that God's hand of blessing will be upon you. I pray that you walk in the blessings of Christ. This is important. The favor of God will envelop you in all that you do. His favor will go ahead of you. Good will be turned towards you. Your name is being called for favor. Open doors like you've never experienced before. No weapon fashioned against you can prosper. You are safe and protected. In the name of Jesus, whatever you're involved with will succeed. The Lord is your shepherd. You will not walk in lack. You will not lack for anything. Because divine supply is granted you for whatever you require. 
You got the supply of God. You got the wisdom of God. Solutions for whatever you need. They are made available unto you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.